Hey, it's Bumblebeery again. So we're here and we're gonna start a party. Mm hmm. Um, but I realize this game is, might take forever if I read everything like I have been, so I might kind of sum up some stuff. I hope that's okay. If you prefer me to go back to the old, like, version, that's totally fine. Just let me know, okay? Okay, so here we go. Um, I gotta stay up and organize a hey, party. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. Sam? <laughs> Back off! <laughs> uh, we'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That's surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer to help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend, so I can sleep in. <gasps> Wait, where are you all gonna sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Okay, I'm gonna head up to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow? Have a good night. <laughs> I will. You too. He's such a flirt. Eric, no. <laughs> what? I wasn't going to do anything. Mm hmm Yes, he was. <laughs> oh, so she's tired, even though she had a nap. I dragged myself to bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and grabbed my economics book, knowing that no matter how tired I was, I had to at least study a page or two before sleeping. Um, after two or three tries, I managed to understand what the page was about. Mm. Equations. Finally, I'm going to bed. Today has been a long day, and I needed the rest. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Three days of surprises in a row would kill me. With that thought in mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! Rude. This guy's from the beginning. Didn't he shoot somebody? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up and couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it! <gasps> Let her go! Matthew? Come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man! <laughs> like you scare me, Sam! Come on! Take one step, I dare ya. <gasps> Why can't I see? Stay away dream. from her, Malix! And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Oh, you're having a vision. Suddenly I felt myself pulled to one side, and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. Oh, Eric. <laughs> so I was held in a tight embrace. I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had faded into the black as the arms around me rocked me comfortingly. Slowly, my eyes flared open. I looked up at the person holding me. Damien! <laughs> uh, his face was painted with worry and concern. I knew he must have seen my dream. Why did I drink of, dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control though? your dreams. Oh, I guess you're right. Are you okay? I, I'm fine. What time is it? Dude, creepy. It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... Does that mean Eric's the one I'm closest to? You can't control your mind reading? No, not yet at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is everything all right? Yeah, I'm all right. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yeah, I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. It was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just courtesy or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. The two boys led me back to the dining room where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. Uh, my stomach growled in need. Are you sure that's your stomach? <laughs> breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. Woohoo! 
Uh, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. That feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand place itself atop my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? <gasps> Morning. You all right? Hey, I'm fine. You're fine. We're all fine. Um, he rustled my hair and then sat down at the table. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Maybe he likes me too. I didn't think he would. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! <laughs> There's no need to yell, Sam! There's every You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! <laughs> From behind me, Eric appeared and sat behind me, uh, rubbing his temples in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. They have a castle? Castle! <laughs> um, oh, that was me, actually. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. Well, isn't that then special? wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Hello, everyone swooshing in. Uh, bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. Yum, yum, yum. They place their plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Mmm, my favorite. Finally. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. Hello? Hey, good morning! <gasps> Hi, Nick. Guess who's at your door right now? Oh my gosh, hello. Right on cue, there was a knock on the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it! She didn't know I was be having a, a harem. <laughs> I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. They're going to be so jealous when they see all of my men. That's okay. I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! Oh. They're going to be mad that I didn't call them and tell them about my uh, succubi friends. Um. What did you think was going to happen when you opened the door? The world stopped around me as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who was merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. You're supposed to be succubi. Like, come on. Uh, <laughs> hi? You're supposed to seduce the ladies. Um, I cannot believe this is happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Oh, someone do something other than stand there. Yes. Please, use your powers. Who are you? <laughs> Suzu, uh, let me explain. What's going on here? Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. Oh my gosh, Eric. Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Uh, they're in your head. I don't think so. There are visitors. They're not my brothers. They would know that. Then why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. Yes, tell them, tell them, tell them. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. Um... Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. What? They're giving Suzu and Naomi food? I guess that's fair enough. Whoa, this looks amazing! I always feed Thank people you. before I lie to them, too. <laughs> Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meal. Oh, stop. <laughs> Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted them to reveal. Uh, they all stood behind her, making me grow more red in the face. <laughs> so, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Well, you see, um... Uh, James just placed a hand on my shoulder, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat... We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. It's such a huge house. A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss <laughs> Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work. So she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. 
We're sorry if we made the situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <laughs> <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? Party, party, party. We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? <laughs> Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look and understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Oh, even though I like my friends, if I want to get one of these guys, I'll have to stay and help around the house. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Besides, it is my housewarming party. I should help out, too. And that's want us to help out as well? No, you'll probably start fighting and run off with one of my boyfriends. All right, <laughs> we'll head on out then so we're not in the way. Sorry, guys, I'll hang out with you soon. It's all good, Anderson. Also, we'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Did you tonight. guys know I can end up with them? Like, someone was telling me that you can end up with two, either of your friends. I was like, what? That is crazy, but awesome. All right, they gave me hugs, and with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was tonight, and we had to do all we could to make everything right. We sat down and talked about what needed to happen. Each guy had been assigned a different part of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. Who am I hanging out with? James told me I could assist one of them. The question was, who? Oh no, I have to pick one? Hmm. I think everyone likes me right now, except for James. I think Eric would be the easiest. Um, followed by Matthew. Hmm. And Sam's been showing me some nice things. And Damien cares. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I will pick, I don't know. I don't know. I guess... I guess... I will help... Mm. Sam or Eric are probably the closest that I'm with. Um... Like, I would never pick Eric in real life. Ever. Because I hate when people are, like, fake flirty and they're just like hey you have body parts let's go for it um sam has too much of like a potty mouth and james is great but i think he's gonna count against me that i didn't laugh with like that i did laugh when they were all being gross um i guess damien would be the next logic you know what you know what you know what i don't know who i just chose i just closed my eyes <laughs> i noted the floor needed waxing and the table surfaces needed major dusting so who am i helping Eric! He's, uh, rolling his sleeves up higher on his arm before looking at me with a raised eyebrow. Are you sure you want to work with me with cleaning this place up? It'll be a lot of cleaning and tidying. Plus, we have to move the chairs to the corner. I do like his voice, though. Um, I shook my head, rolling up my sleeves and walking to the table, grabbing a hold of a chair. I think I can handle lifting a couple chairs and moving them. Eric smiled at me with a soft chuckle before following my lead. Eventually, we had moved all the chairs to the corner of the room and had begun cleaning the room and the table. Silence consumed the air as we both focused on cleaning. I mopped, but as I stepped towards the bucket, my foot rolled over a small fluffy object, causing me to slip. What? What fluffy object? As I, Before I hit the floor, I wound up in the arms of Eric, staring up at him in a dance-like dip while gripping onto his shirt. His face held pure concern as he looked down. Are you down. all right, princess? Aww. I'll nod. Look how sad he looks. But what the heck is Fluffy and just running around down there? That's okay. 
All I could do was nod as I stared at Eric. He was genuinely concerned. There was no flirtation or smirk on his face. It was cute to see a new side of him. That's a relief. You didn't twist your ankle, did you? No, I'm fine. Gently, I felt Eric's arm dip under my knee so he could lift me up bridal style. I gripped tighter onto his shirt before he sat me on the table and knelt down to look at my feet. I, I'm really fine. He didn't speak as he gently looked over my ankles, lightly massaging them to test for pain. I didn't feel any pain. I felt pleasure. I bit my lip as Eric gently massaged. I never had a foot massage before, but Eric had amazing skill. Each touch and press sent a wave of pleasure running up my spine. I had to fight back a moan. He didn't seem to shift to any mischief or seduction. It remained as concerned as ever. He was full of surprises. Eventually, he finished looking at my feet and smiled. So I stood up and giggled. <laughs> you were right, princess. You were fine. Of course I know. He lifted me off the table and swept me to the floor before playing a gentle, swift kiss on my forehead and continuing his work. Ooh, and she's like, her heart's pounding as she finishes cleaning the room. That was cute. That was a cute moment. But I wish they had animated it. Uh, kind of like in the Amarillo waves, but that's okay. Uh, ooh, the party came. Um... I stood in front of a mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time, it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectations. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. It was my test to... So I didn't have my dad, mom or dad guiding me. Knock at the door broke my thoughts, surprising me. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon. So you should hurry getting ready. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. All right. I look fabulous! <laughs> uh, turn from smiles to awestruck stares. What? Dude, you look hot. Ah. Yeah, you look amazing! Where did you get that dress? I've had it for a while. I've just never had the chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. Now that everyone wants peace. Oh, and they're all... Okay, hold on. I need to pause this. Pause. Please. I love formal wear. I love it. Look at all their cute little vests and their shirts that are colored and the little bows and the, the sashes. And Damien, you don't have anything that is slightly remarking your color. You need to work on that. Um, the incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom, dressed all to the nines as proper servants. Eee. Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? Mm hmm Yes. <laughs> I was slightly taken aback at how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gentleman. Even Sam. Um, the boys watched as I descended the staircase one step at a time, like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face slightly flush, but I quickly shook my head and tried to regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered me his hand as he walked me down the final step, smiling. Oh, James. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Oh, thank you. So, are you prepared for tonight? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. This party was more than what it seemed, and I had done all that I could to prepare for it. Now it was all up to fate. The other boys smiled assuringly at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened them to reveal my parents, both dressed in their best. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, my. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. <laughs> it was probably overlooked. Besides, who would oh, deny good matching. service? Oh, they're matching. Do you see their tie and dress match? My parents didn't question the boys. They didn't ask for verification or anything. For all they know, I have a bunch of boyfriends. Oh, the boys are staring at them. Were they using their powers on them? They had to be. There's no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. I guess the servants counted as belongings to the house. Hmm. My mother quickly raced over to me and hugged me. Oh, and she missed her. My mother soon let me go and looked at my outfit. Oh, gorgeous. You look so lovely. David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. I looked at my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I waited for him to look at me. When he did, he let a small smile grace his lips. Your mother's right. You look like you're all grown up. The world around me stopped as my heart pounded hard in my chest. Did my dad just compliment me on his own accord? Kind of. I mean, his mom 
told him to. Thank you, Dad. However, his cold face quickly returned as he began to look around. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? Sure. What do you mean? The entire board from Anderson Toys is coming tonight. Even the vice chairman's son will be coming. All of them will be measuring your potential. Oh, back off. My potential. I'm learning to like To become 18. CEO of the company. Go figure. I knew it. Something was off about tonight. Now this party become much more than I anticipated. I looked at the incubi. They are continuing the servants for my father's approval. Well, I can do this. I can become a CEO and get a boyfriend who's a demon thing. And, oh, my friends are giving me a high five or thumbs up. I can do it. If they believe in me, I can do it. Uh, the main hallway was full of guests. Men and women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me and see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but once again, I was surprised that night. I shook hands with many officials and executive members, putting on that professional face my dad trained me to have. I felt overwhelmed, but I hit it well. Many asked me questions. I tried my best to reply as maturely as possible. Say what they want to hear, not what you want to say. So, how do you feel living on your own at such a young age? Um, I shouldn't say I'd rather be independent. It's been pretty good, actually. I'm so sorry about your grandfather passing away. It really hit all of us hard. Thank you for your condolences. Do you have college plans? Um, yes, I do. I guess there's a possibility, but yes, I do. Um, they weren't about me, they were about the company. Oh, ho, ho, awkward question time. Give me some more, give me some more. What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? Um, either it will be get back on track soon, or that depends on who runs it. What do you think oh. of the philanthropic policy the company has? Um, I like it. Policy that reflects my own do values. Do you think the company should expand from just toys? I don't know. It's a possibility. Eventually the question stopped. Oh my gosh. So I was in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about it, but at least I wasn't being questioned anymore. Oh great, my mom wants to introduce me to someone someone I didn't know. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. Can I smell a setup? Yep. Yep, he was only a couple years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. I really don't want to give him my hand, but I'll give it to you. Just in case. Ew, he kissed it. He smiled at me before releasing my hand. I'm honored to be invited here. My mother smiled at both of us. Ew, ew, and she's all excited. I don't want this guy. I have a house so, full of demons who um, are adorable. You organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Okay. <laughs> Bringing a small fist to his cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. What? I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> uh, having to work there? I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I looked to Andrew, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off. I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. I felt someone my oh no, it's his dad. He was staring at him coldly. Good, get rid of him. So, you're Jared's son. Andrew's body twitched slightly. Whether it was from fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my father. There's tension. How fragile the air had become enough to break at the wrong word. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. Take him out, Dad. Well... <laughs> the guy wanted to take my grandfather's place as CEO? I thought the vice chairman wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. Ugh. Of course not, sir. You're such a And jerk. polite as well. Interesting. It, it looks it like he's you'll throw excuse up. me. Quickly, Andrew retreated from my family into the crowd of people. I'm going to stay here because I do not care about him. I watched as he disappeared in the crowd. I was worried, but I gave him his space. He obviously needed it.
I'm not here for Andrew. <laughs> He's not CEO material. That's because you practically interrogated the One young man. One day I'll go back and I'll see what's going on. A little questioning shouldn't have bothered him. He's obviously not ready for any title in our company. I bit my tongue. I didn't want to make a scene with my dad. One wrong word and he'd lecture me in front of everyone. That was not something I wanted at my housewarming party. But he does need to give the guy a break. Uh, it was getting close to midnight, meaning the party was going to end soon. I lowered the, my gaze out the window and saw a limo pull up. Whose limo is that? Hmm? Oh, that must be Lewis's car. I'll go get him. Stay with your father so you can escort your guests out together. Yes, Mom. Uh, my dad smiled and thanked each person for coming. I did the same. Andrew quickly passed the doors before I could speak. Whatever. <laughs> Eventually, only Susan and Naomi, my parents, and the incubi were left. My dad is a jerk. I feel bad for Andrew, but I don't want to end up with him. That's why I didn't chase him. A uh, wave of confusion wa washing over my face. And you did good tonight. I'm what? proud. Thank you, Dad. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. I always Your knew mother it. and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Mm hmm Right. Thanks for having us. It was a great you party. You guys are so cute. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. I all love right? these friends. They're nice. See ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Visit us soon. Will do. <sighs> uh... I sat on the staircase exhausted. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for your service. Huh, that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Rude. Give her a break, <laughs> man. She was getting interrogated left and right. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. Oh, thanks, Eric. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean mm. up. Oh, I can't help it. Hush, when he Sam. said, when we go, why don't you guys go to bed, I totally thought, Positive. like, are you asking it me to go to bed long. with you? Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. Oh, the guy from my dream, yep. Yeah. Um, I looked around, panicked, alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Oh, Nissan. <laughs> Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Are you sure? Are you really sure? All of us shot our heads toward the doors, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I would have never expected to see. Skin red as blood, eyes black, and gold piercing into mine. Roughened up clothes, a pistol in hand. I saw a monster. I covered my mouth not to scream at the sight. Tried blood covered the bandana around his neck. Ew, behind the red skin man was a similar looking woman in matching thug like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? I hoped you would, you piece of. All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face <gasps> and pulled the trigger. We all gasped and shot, expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but... What? What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, guys, language. What? Uh, and with a loud but empty blank shot. Ooh, it echoed more of its empty shots and kept pulling the trigger. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after the first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? <laughs> this place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Him that? Just chop his head off. <laughs> uh, that's my problem-solving skills there. Man, Rowland <laughs> threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground for flighting. Ooh, it faded into a black flame that disappeared into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Ooh, Grandpa knew about this place? Malix. That was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream. However, I looked to Matthew. Uh, this place is protected by magic? <laughs> it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables hellborn magic. Um, he was mad. This guy, red guy, is mad. He doesn't like it. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? On a pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took the chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Leave them alone. Ha <laughs> ha! Everyone's staring at me. I could feel the boys do the same from behind me. Malix then smirked and leaned in nose to nose with me. And just who the fuck are I you? I am your worst nightmare. Just kidding, that's none of your concern. <laughs> you got a big mouth, nameless bitch. You best be careful who you speak Rude. to. Rude! 
Run! Okay. Ow. Hey! Let her go! Sam! Eric! Oh, no. Oh, within mere seconds, Sam had punched me like square in the jaw, forcing him to let my hair go. As I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malix and back into the group. Come on, Sam. You and me. Right here. Let's go. Come on, asswipe. <laughs> or before they could fight, a woman stepped forward and placed a firm grip on Malix's shoulder. Or Malix, whatever your name is. That's enough, Malix. What? Who do you think you're speaking to, really? woman? The girl who's going to help you kill them. Just not now. Not now? As I stared, I stared as the girl spoke down at Malik. She looked the same, just like pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malik or for me. There's five of them and two of us. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. Then we shoot everyone. Problem solving. Think. Skills. <laughs> if we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted, and it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come and try to exercise us. <laughs> If they could have used their magic, I would sense that the fire would glow from under their teeth. Ew. Um, Malix glared and grunted at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> then Malix turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside! I dare you! <laughs> oh my gosh. That was so old to do that. With that, Melix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. Nice! My knees gave out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? Why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. <sighs> we should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree oh, with you. Nice. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps. Malik left behind on me. I couldn't force myself. I couldn't stop myself from shivering. Was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. Oh, there's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know. It's hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment, too. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers about that I had some unexpected visitors resuming the drama this is also confusing demons and devils and magic all existed and I happened to land in the middle of it what do we do you're safe you've been protected as well what what Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects Ta -da! you your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him or something of that nature we can sense its aura around your body I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises, and this one took the cake in being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. Okay. I'm <sighs> kick his ass right now! Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. What about going outside, won't he? Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Yeah, yes. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? That was a lie. <laughs> uh, although I hope she does. I couldn't help but feel nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys are safe here to uh, become stronger, but what if Malix did the same? Even so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. At least I had time. I went to bed feeling nervous. I felt like a target to something I'd never been able to explain or prove. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did this even all happen? Should they really meddle with this situation? They're only staying until after they defeat this guy. That's right. They said they'd only stay until after they defeated him. 
After that, my life could go back to normal. Temporary insanity, as Kay would say. The question was then, would I want them to leave? Even if my light went back to normal. Hold on, hold on, stop reading the files. Uh, then I'd have to care for the house all on my own. I'd get to focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I'd have to. My life... Where was my life going anywhere? I was under pressure from my parents and my only friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide from my responsibilities. Enough. Let's just sleep and deal with tomorrow when it comes. Defeating my sense of thought, I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me. Hopefully, whatever the future had for me, I... I promise to be with you forever. Hmm? You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. Please... Let me love you. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without oh, you. Oh, are these all the endings? I want to be with you. Okay, I'm going to end this episode here. So we have a new opponent, and he's all grumpy and wants to kill us. How very exciting. But we'll revisit it next time. I hope you guys stay sweet, and I'll see you for the next episode. Take care now.